Hello, everyone, and thank you very much, Efrat, for this beautiful alignment. So this is our 11th lab session for our nations. And it will be a session, a reflection together on the work that we have done so far and sharing with each other where we are now, where we have arrived and get a sense of what is emerging so that in the next session, next month, we can reflect on how we continue this work of awakening the soul of our nations. So we are looking back on almost a year of work together. We started with um, slowly going through the steps of building a small national group, Nucleus, a functioning service unit. This is, of course, always the beginning point. And then we took a few sessions to have a look and a structured look into the personality expression of our nation followed by a couple of sessions where we explored um, and paved the way towards contact with the national soul. And then we started to put it all together. We took our place on our national pinnacle as silent watchers. And we practiced the double role of being part of a national Ajna center. On the one hand, being receptive to the national soul. And on the other, directing this soul energy into the national personality. So receptive and active function. Probably the most significant experience that we had during this year is that uh, through this national work together, we seem to become an active part of the planetary Ajna Center. <clears throat> we have heard in our various sharings uh, these impressions that it seems like a whole strata of planetary consciousness has become more alive and more accessible, more tangible. And we have really actively, practically started to experience ourselves as active participants in this planetary function. So now we have the basic work tools and we have a roadmap. And of course, much specified application lies ahead of us. Um, a lot is, is to be explored here in this pioneering work. So at this moment, let's just uh, recapitulate and hear from each other. What is it that we have learned so far? And uh, what are we presently doing with this work, in this national work? What are our questions currently, our visions, our needs, our difficulties in this national work? So it will be a great joy to hear back from all of you. Um, and we invite, first of all, the groups that have already formed to come forth and share. And then people who work alone, meanwhile, with this national work. And afterwards, anyone, all the participants who may have not started yet um, a specific work with their nation, but would 
would like to. So let us each one or each group take a short space of time, maybe a couple of minutes, to just give a brief overview of our work and our vision and our needs. And as we do so, let's practice to make our report what the Tibetan calls brief but full and letting the inner quality shine through our words. So it's a little bit like going together through the garden and looking at what is already growing. So let us listen to each other with joy and with a fine attentiveness. And afterwards, after the sharing, uh, we will do a meditation in which we will hold our harvest into the higher light and start telepathically and intuitively to connect the dots so that we can perhaps see some of what lies ahead. Okay, so we invite now the groups to share about your work. Please, whoever is ready can raise your hand and uh, Alexander will unmute you. Kit, uh, please unmute yourself. Maybe the hand was raised by mistake, so I will unmute Jeffrey. There we are. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Oh, Hello, lovely. Jeffrey. Hello. Uh, I have uh, very inspired by the national work and uh, with a couple of other servers, we've uh, created it's what started as a little triangle and now is a little quaternary of a uh, meeting once a week to uh, to gather uh, information, ideals about the United States, and then to have a short meditation and uh, then take the fruits of that meditation and, um, and uh, write those down and, and plow those back into the soil of our work. And, uh, from that idea and from that work that we've done together, um, we've gained a lot of insight on the United States, uh, its challenges, its benefits, its uh, its ideals, and uh, so um, so grateful for that. And then what has developed is that uh, we are. Uh, sponsoring our little our little group is sponsoring a meditation on the national holiday the 4th of july and uh it's in the planning stages now but our idea is to take a time when the national uh, uh the the national thought is towards patriotism towards towards our country towards the symbols of our country and to uh, use that opportunity to fill the fill the field with uh, ideals and upliftment that um, that the soul of the nation can be uh, invoked by the people and uh, the higher aspirations using perhaps the flag or the uh, idea of uh, the fireworks. Um, so that's that is our plan. Fourth of July. Uh, watch the space. We'll uh, we'll be sending out. We'll have a a link for uh, people to connect to that meditation. It'll be uh, on the fourth of July uh, in the morning, Sunday morning. 
Mm. Thank you, Jeffrey. Maybe you can uh, uh, put your email address in the chat so people could connect with you. Absolutely, I'm happy to do that. Great initiative. Kit's hand is raised again, so Kit, please unmute yourself. If you would like yes, to speak. I'm, I'm, um, I don't know why my hand is raised, because it's showing on my best computer is not being raised. But I do um, want to express deep appreciation uh, to Jeffrey and Maria Christina and the other members of that group for the work that they are doing as a group and um, many of us, others of us are um, working uh, individually as well and um, I look forward to being in touch with them more about the July 4th meditation may i ask one thing um my when i thought that when the hand has a red arrow in it it means it's not raised am i wrong by that i'm not sure what you mean a uh, red arrow it's um there is a red arrow that allows you to minimize the control panel kit is no, no. on on for the raised hand I assume that there's a red arrow pointing down that says lower hand, and that's what's been on my um, little icon of the hand. But for some reason, you're seen as the hand raised. It was good to hear you, Kit. Thank you. Yes. And Kit, uh, would you like to say something about your initiative? Oh, I apologize for that. Um, one of the things that I'm doing is um, just also holding a certain amount of um, grounding energy also because I actually live in the national capital of Washington. So um, it's it's I have a process of uh, linking up with everyone who is um, both invoking the soul of course of the United States each day for grounding our invocation and then as well also having a linking with everyone who is invoking the souls of all nations as well and doing that um with a conscious realization that i am in the capital city and i understand you you work also in a triangle with the soul yes. of, of the us yes mm -hmm. yes i do work in a trying uh a triangle as well so and, you, and you're using a specific meditation outline um we are not using, we're using a meditation outline that is an outline <clears throat> um, that is regarding the soul of the, the USA that was developed initially uh, for this initiative of the soul of all nations and was has been distributed to everyone who is part of this group, uh, at least as far as I'm aware of them being part of um, this group. And then also other people are, are expanding on that as well in other triangles for other groups, mm -hmm. as we've heard on, on different gatherings here. Mm -hmm. 
but you're not meeting the three of you uh, uh, actually um, online. You're doing subjectively each one in, in your own time, the, the meditation? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hello, this is Rob from Australia, from Melbourne, Australia. Can you hear me? Hello, Rob. Hello, Australia. Yes. First of all, the kit, the, the red and green arrows kit, when it's showing the red arrow, it's indicating the action. So the red arrow down, down means if you click on it, you put your hand down. When your hand is down, it shows a blue or green arrow up, which means if you click on it, your hand will go up. So that was why I when you're... When your hand was up, it was showing a red arrow down because that's the next action. Oh, thank you for that. Okay. Now, the Australian group. Um, the work of this group started about 18 months ago with what appeared to be a spiritual impulse to a couple of the members of the group, sh then shared with the rest of the group. And... Um, the group began working in earnest um, with a meditation outline about the middle of last year. Um, the meditation outline is very clear but has changed quite a lot during the course of those nine months. And so we've come to have a clearer understanding of what it is we seem to be called upon to, to do. The outline we're working now is quite stable. We've made a decision within the group that we will not change the words now for quite some time until we feel the need to do that. Um, we meet weekly online. There are seven in the group. At the, yes, and that's been quite stable. Um, we have met once online with the Canadian group and that was that was very enjoyable and and, and productive. Um, our sense is that because Australia is a middle nation in many ways, it's a middle nation economically, militarily, um, perhaps even in terms of its culture, Certainly, it's geographically a middle nation, placed between Asia, Europe, and the USA, and between two great oceans. So we have this sense that that the the task of the of Australia, of this nation of ours, has to do with being in the middle, um, amongst other nations, and certainly we see the work of Australia as being a, a task to, to work within the greater task of all of the nations. So we, we look for that. So the connection with Canada was in, important. Um, we also would like um, in due course to, to enlarge that, um, perhaps to have some other middle nations that, that are in this curious position of being a straddling or, or being able to turn our gaze to the left. No, I shouldn't use that. One way or the other, uh, depending upon what is required and to bring those opposites together, or at least be a means through which some bringing together of opposites, maybe I mean opposites among nations and among cultures together. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for this brief and full report, Rob. Looking forward to hear how this will all develop. I unmuted Svetlana. Svetlana, please unmute yourself. Yes. Is the sound good? Yes. Hello, Denise. Hello, Hello. Denise. Hello. 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 
Uh, I see it. But uh, I first of all uh, would to, uh, thank the Hacker Group, Star Group, for their valuable work. And it was um, said to tell a little about each of a group, uh, and um, that's why I want to share uh, a little uh, about our work of our group. And maybe it will be interesting in, uh, in several aspects. Uh, our group from Russia, we named uh, Russian Foundation of Servers of Goodwill. And uh, uh, <clears throat> we are five years old and uh, started five years ago by holding month monthly webinars on full moons and we are still doing this and um, uh, since the beginning of last year we have started to hold to hold webinars on new moons in addition to meditation we also explore the main problems of, of humanity uh, we re remember how important it is for the disciples of the planet to work with ideas in a group format to deposit them in the form of ideals and create a mental reserve. And uh, we describe the essence of the problems, highlight the esoteric aspects and try to find a solution of the problem in a group format. And uh, this work we do uh, on uh, on new moon webinars, and we have associated uh, topics of human problems to ten seed groups. I believe you know what I'm talking about. And uh, then, in turn, we have arranged them according to the signs of the zodiac starting with Aries and ending with Capricorn. Thus, last year we were able to highlight the esoteric aspects of such human problems as autism, distance education, transhumanism. Uh, we compare uh, the advantages and disadvantages of democracy and meritocracy and realize the importance of global cooperation of esoteric groups. Um, this is one as aspect of our work, and uh, uh, other our direction is uh, to support the formation of individual small esoteric groups. In the past and uh, uh, the year before, a group of esoteric healers uh, uh, imaged uh, from our ranks and as well as a group of psychologists and uh, uh, however um, the main task we see is uh, to dissipate glamours and delusions in humanity i think this work is very much in line with the work of Hegel group and with the lap of the awakening of the souls and of nations. And indeed, after all, the dissipating glamour is, in fact, the introduction of light into humanity, the light of the soul, and that is the awakening of souls of nations. Um, but uh, I think that one of the most dangerous obsessions uh, in the world in the world today is the world world's lies and uh, the so-called fake news. And our foundation is preparing to release a 500-page book about Russia this summer, and it is planned to translate it into English. And uh, perhaps we will ask for some help from our Western friends, colleagues, uh, with the translation to make it perfect. Uh, it, 
its original title is uh, Russia, Animal Friend, uh, the Russia you never knew about. Mm, uh, this book tells about Russia in the recent past when it was the USSR. It traces its history to the present day and exposes all the lies that are raining down on Russia today from the materialist forces. And it turns out, dear friends, that Russia is not the aggressor at all, and quite the opposite, a friend that offers to build a new world on the principles of peace, kindness, mutual respect and equality. Thank you, friends. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Um, I would uh, add here that uh, we are uh, with the Russian group of Dennis and Svetlana uh, in uh, communication in the last few months. And I find it uh, very important to communicate across this East-West divide. And I hope that uh, by um, grounding these national um, groups, national outposts, that we can build bridges specifically also over, uh, over uh, tension points and, and divides. Uh, so thank you, Dennis, for sharing, mm, for, for, for being with us here. I think thank it's you. really important to, 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 to be in, in touch, to, to build these lines of communication. Yes, exactly, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, friends. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sasha. There was another hand raised by Maria Cristina. I'm not sure if Maria Cristina still would like to share anything. There we go. It's just wonderful work. And I was just going to piggyback perhaps on what has been said. Um, as Jeff first mentioned, we started this work inspired by Uta to evoke the soul of our nation, not just the soul of nations, as has often or foundationally provided by the United Nation and the work we do as global citizens, but as specific national disciples. And so this has been very groundbreaking work for me to assume that role actually as a citizen, contributing personality, contributing soul to the soul of the nation, in my case, the United States, which is very, very extensive and so I'm very, um, we'll just add that a strong impetus for the creative lab in July is to collaboratively connect those lighted lines of relationship, acknowledging our united efforts and lending strength to our evocative work. It's a lattice work, an etheric lattice work of invocative, evocative efforts. And thank you. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Mm. 
more groups. Jonathan, you're unmuted. Please unmute yourself. Yes, hello, uh, everyone. <clears throat> um, yes, my name is uh, Jonathan uh, Evely, and I'm really affiliated to uh, the Wisdom Group in America and linked indirectly with Jeffrey and others and their work in principally in uh, service for the American nation, but very much um, working and inspired with all international efforts. And it's such a joy to hear all of the different initiatives which are taking place to recognize and realize and be at one with the intergroup, the international one world effort here. I'd just like to speak very briefly about the efforts which are facilitated by the Wisdom Group, but it's really an intergroup effort, has been meeting for about three months now, uh, weekly on Saturdays. And broadly speaking, aligns with the three masters, Master M, Master R and Master DK uh, in synthesis. So the ashramic work recognizes the work of those three masters and aligns with the avatar of synthesis, which of course supports all group efforts towards merging and moving toward a common service function on behalf of our planet. The, so there's great benefit here in learning from each other's techniques. And that's the point which I'd like to emphasize at this time, because it's unfolding. Many of you have been meeting together much longer than I have, relatively new to participating with you in the Creative Lab. The Perhaps the, the, the point that I want to share is that the meditation outline we're using, similar to your own, um, is to become receptive to the energies of the divine plan in the cave center, and then consciously directs them synthetically via the group Ajna center to and through the group instrumentality or the group consciousness, let's say, of the uh, of, of governance and the various departments. So it, it would be uh, the group that of a group of leadership, the uh, these the Senate and the governing bodies, the judiciary, uh, the Pentagon, and then you know the overall public and moving out internationally. So the focus, I guess, is directing more towards uh, aligning and moving that synthetic energy through the instrumentality of the nations. And there's such a sense of sharing of the responsibility. I think that's probably the best word I can I can put to it. Uh, of, of working with that group life. One might refer to it as the pers personality of the nation, but actually it's uh, where we see it as the, the group soul of the nation, consciously participating in uh, receiving and directing those energies. So um, that's every Saturday and uh, the outline is available uh, as well. Uh, as by participation uh, for anyone who, who would like. So thank you for listening, thank you.
Jonathan, thank you for your sharing. Maybe you also can put your email address in the chat for people who are interested to receive the outline. And um, yes, we, we were in touch also uh, by email. Um, I just want to emphasize uh, uh, the importance, what you said, that uh, learning from each other's techniques and specifically from Lucille Sedekrantz's uh, techniques, we, we can learn a lot. It's, it's a really practical, uh, a practical approach uh, to this work. Thank you a lot. Thank you. And if, uh, if I may, I'd like to share two short paragraphs which just came up in one of the writings. Uh, mm -hmm. Very relevant. Please do so. You are. OK. Uh, it's just a moment. Uh, you are, by your work within the cave, contacting souls with which you are not even aware, both in your environment and out of incarnation. The cave is your point of contact, but to arrive at that point involves a great deal of preparation. As stated previously, you have alignments to build, centers to activate, lines of light to repeatedly build and maintain. A constant center of focus within the Ajna is essential. So I find that interesting to see how that center function is threefold really because we align upwards to the divine plan we receive into that center of being and then we project out and it's the uh, uh, we project out as the oneness of our collective group life thank you mm. yes thanks Uh, you are unmuted. Please unmute yourself. Is, is, this is Martha speaking. I'd like to um, offer a, a bit of experience that I have had with the group that Jonathan is speaking about. Um, I'd like to speak to the notion of technique. It seems to me that just as we observed in earlier uh, sessions together, <clears throat> the um, necessity of finding uh, the truth in the connection between uh, the soul and the personality of the country, whatever, whichever country we're working on. It's also true that the cross of service uh, is calling us to um, perhaps stand at the center of the cross beams of the cross, where the vertical and the horizontal come together. And I know that there's a lot of talk in, in the global circles about breaking up our silos. And we have been taught that in order to engage in something uh, truly effectively, we need to have expertise and that um, this expertise must come about through much long and arduous work, which has a lot of merit to it. Alongside that, it seems to me that one of the techniques that we're having to appreciate um, more as we do this work is the work of the intuitive that synthesizes, that takes us to that fusion point between our rational understanding of the times that we're in and the 
a vertical uh, energetic exchange of the great invocation, evocation. So when we, I will speak to the experience uh, that I have during the Saturday meditation, the soul of the United States, it is, to me, it seems to be emanating from this recognition of the existence of the ashram of synthesis. <clears throat> we know that DK brought it together with Moria and Master Vokotsi. And I think that it, it could only have come about as a result of the the end of World War II and the world's determination to never have another world war again. That our thinking sometimes also tends to um, keep the esoteric esoteric and the exoteric exoteric, but I don't think that's the way it works uh, moving forward, that we're learning as esoterics to manifest that in the outer grounded world. And the outer grounded world is seeking to make better use, more effective use of this, this great energy always pouring in, always present with us, that which we do not yet see because of our attachment to old forms. So again, I wanted to turn back to this great work that has been done during this creative lab time <clears throat> on the soul of nations, because we are learners together. And this, it, we're reminded that all these different groups are really acting as one group. Um, but I would like to stress the technique involving the ashram of synthesis. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. You sound, it sounds a seventh ray note huh? of, um, of the highest and the lowest meet. You need to have the whole spectrum. Thanks for highlighting this. And there are uh, Robert's and Jonathan's hands are raised again. I'm not sure if mm. you speak or you would like to share more. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander. Um, yes, I wanted to add to the comments, some of the comments that have been made by um, the American groups regarding the source of the inspiration. Um, as it was perceived to, to reach the Australian group about initially about 18 months ago, there was a clear sense that it was a Ray 1, Ray 7 energy that appeared to be coming through um, Master R and um, supported by Master M. And that was the sense of it with Master DK supporting the work. So initially the the wording that, that arose um, as the early members of the group worked on it was very much a Ray 1, Ray 7 wording. Um, as we worked with it, we realized that that wasn't sufficient, that we needed the magnetism of Ray 2. Um, and so that was the line along which the main evolution of, of the wording occurred as we introduced or, or did our best to introduce the magnetism of Ray 2 into in, into the work that we were doing, which which we perceived as essentially being Ray 1, Ray 7 in its initial impulse. Um, and just one other comment that's closely related to that is the sense that we have something that DK says about it's not sufficient to wait until the hierarchy takes an interest in the work that an individual or a group is doing, then in fact the the 
group or the individual must attract the interest of hierarchy. Um, that is the focus and energy of the work and the, the level at which it's driving must be sufficient to arouse the interest of hierarchy um, in order to, to gain more or become a receiver of more energy to build the work. So that, and there's been a clear sense of that in the work that we're doing, that we try to make it worthy of what we are asked to do and sufficiently worthy to be worthy of more input from the high sources. Thank you. Yes, Rob, this is our experience also in Hechal with the work with the Jewish people. Um, this reciprocity, reciprocal approach, that there is a co-measuredness. Um, uh, the more we stand there and, and do, the, do this work, the more resources are being made available also from above. Thanks. Hello, I don't know if I have no hand to rise on my screen here. I don't know why. Uh, but I try to, I can tell you from Denmark, you can hear me? Yes, Greta. Good, good. Uh, from Denmark, we are a small group. We started uh, last year in the, the autumn and uh, we started as a triangle. Uh, we meet online. And another, uh, a fourth person came and joined us. So now we are four in our group. We are very young. And uh, as I said, we are meeting every two weeks at new moon and a full moon. Uh, together with our, with our med meditations, where we are invoking uh, the soul of the, our nation, and to uh, see how it shows in the in the physical life here in Denmark, uh, we came upon very special events from right from the beginning, from the start of the nation of old legends and old uh, archetypes. Uh, we had to study. That was very interesting to see how it started. In a way, they turned up immediately at our first uh, meditations. Um, we are working uh, almost with the outline that we are doing here uh, with Uta and, uh, and then we are adapted it to our own uh, group and our own work here. Um, and we took, right now we are working to consolidate without, uh, besides the, our meditation, we're working to consolidate our group looking at our group horoscope and our next meeting we will look at the horoscope of Denmark uh, so we don't have much to say right now as we are and we are very um, curious to see where it brings us uh, all our work but we really feel we are supported in this work with the Danish uh, uh, so, so that's all for now. We are very young and our uh, baby hasn't got a name till now, <laughs> but we are waiting for that. <laughs> it will, it, we, are, we know it will suddenly, we will know what, what's, uh, what the name will be. But yeah, so that's all for me right now. Maybe we'll come up later with some more. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Grete. Greetings to Denmark. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So I can spot a few more uh, working units. Um, the Ukrainian, Canadian, the Japanese, Mexico. Um, so perhaps you would like to also share.
while we're waiting for raised hands, I just want to say that um, there were uh, the several comments coming in the questions section that I reposted. Uh, mm -hmm. There were questions about uh, contact information to get in touch with Jonathan and with Robert. Uh, so mm, please see those requests in the uh, chat box. And there was also one uh, comment from Risa uh, talking about her group. Uh, mm -hmm. Should I read it, Uta? Yes, please. Uh, this is Risa. We are an esoteric uh, group meets each morning. We, as an esoteric group, meet each morning. There are nine of us. We call forth and invoke the soul of all nations. Meditation from Uta. Each Wednesday and call forth each morning the freedom lords and the four freedoms for all nations. Freedom of speech and expression, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. From mm -hmm. President Roosevelt, January 6, 1945. Thank you, Risa, for highlighting freedom. I think this is really key to what is going on right now on our planet. The Lords of Liberation. Yeah, this aid is very much needed. I can report briefly on the work of uh, our small Ukrainian group. Uh, mm -hmm. We are in international group. Um, we meet twice a month uh, and uh, the members of our, it's online a group and members of the group are in Ukraine and the United States and sometimes in Russia. Um, and um, since the start uh, of this creative lab, we started using the outline uh, suggested. Uh, and uh, it was interesting observation, especially after the meditation when we would Besides just calling the soul of our nation, but also recognizing the personality of the nation and the, uh, connecting the soul and personality. Um, it, there, it was quite a vibrant response coming from the ethers, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, we adopted uh, this, uh, the version of this meditation to our um, meetings when we meet uh, every time. So that's a brief report. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, vibrant uh, responses huh? when you're, uh, once we deal really uh, specifically with the personality of a nation, so there's immediately this aspect of transmutation that presents itself. Mm -hmm. That's rather vibrant, <laughs> specifically with with uh, nations where there is a lot uh, a lot going on. Margo, I know you don't have a raise your hand function because you're a panelist, same as Greta, but if you would like to share anything about the Canadian group. Thanks, Alexander. Good telepathic pickup. <laughs> um, I am supporting, currently supporting the Canadian group subjectively, so I am not as um, up to date on the day-to-day -day workings. Uh, there may be someone else on the call who can help with that. Um, what we, we, we began using uh, Uta's outline and continue to use that and have also adapted it um, for Canada. Um, what we, we have um, completed a chart. We're such a large country that the uh, astrology chart was 
cast for the center of the country because uh, people in the groups are uh, in sort of central Canada and on the west coast. In looking at the shadow of Canada, uh, that's we've started to delve into that and um, looking at healing and reconciliation that needs to be done um, with the Indigenous peoples of Canada, Indigenous nations. We are a country of composed of many nations and uh, many cultures. So the work is progressing and uh, perhaps Shirley uh, or Graciela, if, if you have anything to add, that would be great. I know that, um, that Frida and uh, others in, in, uh, in the Invoking the Soul of Canada group are, are uh, participating in uh, full moon meditation with, with, at the moment. Thank you, Marga. No pressure, Shirley or Graciela. <laughs> Hello, Jim Clark here. Hello, Jim. Hello, everybody. I'm in Mexico. <clears throat> and as far as I know, I'm completely alone. Uh, there may be other energies there that are supporting me, but I haven't recognized them <clears throat> or maybe they haven't recognized me so the only thing that I think that may be of value to say here is sitting on the pinnacle and looking out over the country of Mexico over the last several sessions the only thing that really has come to my mind is that the predominance of the sixth ray and the fourth ray in this country is really quite astonishing. And so I'm thinking, well, then maybe the next octave up should be the second ray. <laughs> and I suppose that's a possibility. Of course, that's just a personality supposition that I have made. And as we all know, the future of the work is in group formation and so it's been very beneficial for me to hear the other members that have reported I have several people working in the groups and uh, one of the most important reasons that that I like to be here with you all is just to be with you all I feel like the work that you're all doing I feel like I am supporting the work that you're all doing and I feel that my energy and my attitude and my faith toward the group endeavor is having an effect on all of you. And so I'm just going to keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Jim, thank you. And thank you for keeping on, keeping on, on your pinnacle in Mexico. Um, of course, it's uh, it's not so easy to do this work alone. And it is good, uh, even if we are alone, to imagine ourselves doing it as a group. Um, I think this is very important. And for us, it is important. It's, it's really uh, very vital that we hear each other's voices, hear a little bit of what we are doing um, so we can better ground in our visualizations. Um, these pinnacles, they become more, more tangible. Um, and that's really important in our work of, of, of grounding, grounding this field, grounding this work, um, meditating it into existence. So thanks a lot, Jim. Uh, thank you very much, Uta.
Uh, Lerata, you unmuted. Yes. Hi. How are you? Um, I just wanted to add. I'm a part of uh, the group that works. I work with Jonathan and Martha, and the group that we meet on Saturdays. Um, that one of the other aspects um, that we do, um, as we went through 2020, we Jonathan spearheaded full moon meditations on a monthly basis. And uh, as we approached 2021, um, we culminated the full moon and, and instead began to focus on new moon meditations. And as we embarked on that endeavor, it became obvious that as we bridge, moving from the Piscean age into the Aquarian age, that it was the transmutational aspect was extremely important. Mm -hmm. And as a result, Jonathan created a fantastic, um, or really kind of, well, how do you say, shaped, reshaped a meditation that by Cedar Crans and adapted it and amplified it a bit. Um, and we are using that on a daily basis, to tell you the truth. And it's a fantastic meditation that can be used either for personal, for group, or for the larger national or international group. Um, and we're finding it to be extremely beneficial. So, um, and with the idea that as we move into the Aquarian age, we, we begin to create, we work with the Devic world to create a new blueprint for the new civilization. That's the actual goal. So um, we wanted, to, I just wanted to add that bit. Um, I thought that's an important aspect of the work that's being done. And we really do, as a group, um, look forward to more international um, camaraderie. Mm -hmm. I think it's extremely important. Um, um, for the nations to get together. And our focus as a group is always more so on an international basis. Um, um, we're always looking at the major continents uh, and how all of us can begin to show and manifest the integrative approach. So I just wanted to add that bit, thank you. Yeah, Nirata, I can just underline whatever you said, all of it, the transmutation work, the Devic cooperation, the international camaraderie and, uh, and uh, looking at the, uh, a planetary picture really with the continents uh, and yeah, thank you and let's do it. Yeah, we have maybe one more. Uh, um, Reiko, would you maybe like to say something before we move on to the meditation? If Reiko would like to speak, please raise your hand. And meanwhile, I want to, uh, again, to draw your attention to the uh, chat uh, where I repost uh, um, comments. There's several requests of people who wants to connect uh, with those people who spoke, so please check. And uh, I'm unmuting Reiko, and uh, Uta, there is also Eva Smith from Canada who raised her hand. Okay. Hi, <laughs> this is Reiko from Reiko. Tokyo. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, sorry, it's midnight in Japan, so I speak um, very um, simple. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, 
I do meditate for the soul nation by myself since uh, there's no um, many P uh, esoteric students in Japan. But I so appreciate to be here um, to connect <clears throat> people around the world who does this um, beautiful meditations. But in Japan now, uh, we have a lot of separation um, um, since um, the, the problems happened, Olympic Games, Corona, a lot of things. So I do I always meditate to connect and um, for the futures and uh, the not by the uh, the solution, not by the um, personality, but by the souls. Yes, thank you. Mm. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. I think it is very important uh, really to hold these international connections also especially with with the countries where uh, where there are not so many esoteric students um, and where where we need yeah to weave in these outposts and uh, really especially with uh, Japan uh, having Tokyo as a planetary center Yes, Eva. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Good. <laughs> I'm Hi. part of the Canadian group, and Margot filled you in on a few of the things that we are doing. Uh, we have dealt with some of the shadow of Canada, but it's an area we don't want to dwell on. It's very uh, depressing, to be honest. Um, our energies are very similar, believe it or not, to China. We have, according to the Tibetan, we have a Libra personality and a Turian soul based on what has been offered. And the interesting thing is with our astrology, we have Libra rising. So Libra is a very important part of our energetics and as we know libra likes to not make waves it likes to keep everything copacetic and cooperating and so we're known as peacekeepers throughout the world right now uh, and libras try to follow rules somehow we don't we just don't buck the system we're not rebellious so right now our energy here in Canada is very draconian based on the, the politics and based on the whole pandemic. So we feel very, I feel very oppressed here in Canada right now. But with the Turian uh, energy of vision and illumination, there is so much that we can bring down from hierarchy and from Shambhala to elevate to elevate our energy, to make us really understand what the higher vision is and what we can offer humanity. So our meditations are very much uh, what you, Uta, have offered with a little twist and some of our own um, perspectives on our nation, which is so large as well. From sea to sea, we have three seas to deal with and right across. So we have a lot of diversity within our nation and we try in our meditations to, to elevate elevate the, uh, the energies to keep it high. So um, I could say a lot more, but I, I know time is running out and we want to meditate. So I will mm. say thank you and that's it. Mm. Thanks a lot, Eva. Okay, we have one more comment. Shall we maybe read it from Catherine? Sasha, can you read it, yes. please? Um, this is from Catherine Davison. Appreciation to their organizers, thank you. Just wanted to speak to the tradition of diplomacy which often relies upon the fourth ray functions, art and culture, to establish points of inspiration and commonality. I hold the vision of government, of governmental and non-governmental cooperation 
to dispel the illusion of separativeness. Thank you. Yes, and Risa sending love to Jim and to Reiko. Thank you. Okay, time is running, so let us meditate. <laughs> 